So a while ago, I bought the bundle called the IDEO Synthology when it was on sale. It includes a bunch of games and DLC that we all recognize. You know, Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, Just Cause. However, there's a bunch of games I've never heard of. So here's what's happening. I'm going to play all these games and talk about them. Starting with the games I've never heard of, then the games that we all know. And hey, who knows? Maybe there's a game here that you want to check out yourself. So let's get started with... An Acronox. Did I say that right? Did you say it right? I don't know. This is a third-person RPG and was released in 2001. It was made by Ironstorm, a game studio that created Deus Ex. Huh. It shows. This is one of those games that I've heard nothing about, and that's weird. It's an RPG Deus Ex, I feel like it shouldn't have just disappeared like it has. The Steam store page states the following. Join Sylvester Sly Boots and Stiletto Anyway as they trek across six bizarre planets, investigating a galaxy-crushing mystery, searching for artifacts from an extinct alien race, and unlocking the secrets of a powerful, advanced technology. It's your turn. Pick your poison. Eat me. All right. Damn, man. I'm getting the feelings of Mass Effect here. Hell, even Knights of Old Republic. I'm definitely feeling it from the key features section. Craft your team from a cast of seven characters. Unravel evil galactic schemes. Solve devious puzzles. And fight wicked monsters. Immerse yourself in amazing turn-based real-time battles. Assemble alien weapons and master challenging minigames. All this, plus mind-blowing cinematics and a heavy dose of gut-busting humor. Hot damn! I'm ready, are you ready? Ready to have your gut burst? Well, let's begin. Ah, damn it. Yeah, there's no resolution option. Looks like I'm gonna have to stretch this out a bit. Now, this is a problem I'm gonna have with a lot of the old games that I review here. This is the best I can do. I play on normal because I don't want things to be too easy or way too hard. Here we go. Okay, let's speed this up a bit. Yeah, this is going on for a while, so let me explain. We play as Detective Sly Boots on the planet Atronox, and he is clearly in some debt. No, no, no. Oh. Eh? Eh? The money boots. Or next time, I mix and match. After that wonderful exchange, our little ship, which is basically his Cartana, tells us that we need to go find Burp, because it ain't coming to you. And now we're finally playing the game! The first thing I notice is the camera and the movement is very quick and choppy. Also, I feel the need to tell you that it doesn't feel like you need a manual to play this. Not yet, anyway. I remember most old RPG games had a shit ton of buttons and hidden mechanics that you had to memorize, and it really took from the experience. Not here. 
although the game controls are a bit weird. You'd expect to walk up to a person or an object and press an action button to interact with it, right? I tried doing that for a while until I realized that there's an interactive mode and an explore mode. It's a point and click mixed with third person movement. The interactive mode is where you just stand still and you have to click on things with your mouse. And explore is just where you move around. It's weird. Whenever we can interact with something, our little ship cursor does barrel rolls, which is nifty. So anyway, we go back up to our office to collect a camera that we'll never use, and some money. We go back down and talk to people around the bar for job leads. One person named Valesta, yeah, okay, tells us a friend of hers took a job to explore some tunnels for a guy, and they may need an extra hand. Not really fitting for a detective, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. We leave the bar and get targeted. Oh shit, I don't know how to play yet. No! Huh. Well then. Cortana tells us to go take some classes on self-defense. Yeah, I learned pretty quickly that Boots doesn't have a lot of friends here. So that's not a bad suggestion. Here we finally see the outside and man. This is the future. Look at that! Walking on walls like that! It's awesome! I love the look of this game. They really nailed the future slum style. It's so dingy and sad, I love it. Being able to make the walls walkable, that just would make so much space. It wouldn't be so- That poor creep fell 40 feet to his death. The graph path up there must have malfunctioned. Shit! Never mind, I can tell nobody really cares about the maintenance. Jeez. So we find ourselves at Whackmaster Jack's Temple of Beating? What a name. For some fighting tutorials, which you literally have to pay for. So let's talk about the combat. To hit or not to hit? Fights are slow. I would have preferred a system like Dragon Age, where you could tell the characters to follow set commands, like use abilities whenever possible or heal on low health. Sadly, you have to command every character with no auto fight, as well as there being no way to speed up the animations either. I mean, the animations are cool, but goddamn, they just take forever, and when you see them once, that's it. You gotta see them a fucking hundred more times. I also hate how the game doesn't let me stop and go through the menus and choose an action. If a character is ready to act, wouldn't that mean that they would know what they're going to do, not just stand there waiting for permission? Also, since the computer will know instantly what they're going to do each action, it gives the enemy an advantage. If you're not quick enough, the enemy will attack you multiple times while you're still thinking. So if you want to be the most efficient and effective, you need to know what you plan to do with each character within seconds of actually commanding them. It's also not as simple as attack and defend. If a melee character wants to attack, they have to move close to the target first. Ranged can attack from anywhere, however it's less likely to hit. There's also status effects, items, experience points, and leveling up just like an RPG. The only thing I do like about the combat are the animations. They're good. But they suffer from being so slow. Man, I really went off there, didn't I? I just... I just needed to say that, alright? It's a problem with all real-time RPGs. And it's the reason why I specifically have a problem with them. What did you say? So we finish our long tutorial, I mean training session, and move on. Random encounter? Wait, no, planned encounter. At this point I was wondering how the encounters would work. Would they be random, or out in the open like this? And if they are like this, will they respawn, or is there a chance I could lose the chance to make any money and fuck myself later by buying stuff now? This game could do something like that. Alright, let me tell you right now that they respawn, but I'm not sure if it's because you leave an area or that they just need a set amount of time to. Moving on. 
So while walking around, I learn about these Nox guards. They're scummy, caring, abusive, funny characters. I don't trust them from the numerous things I've learned about them, but not all of them are bad. In this scene, a woman has had her purse stolen, and a Nox guard is being very polite and helpful. Meanwhile, here, I'm told I resemble a guy he hates, and he wants to take his anger out on my face. This Nox guard asks me if I've seen a girl in the picture, which is the girl that gave me the quest. I didn't know if they were good or bad at this point, so I just said no and didn't think much of it. Here, we have a Nox guard waiting for a guy to burn to death so the fire can be put out. I'll come back to this later because I'm seeing a problem with the game and it keeps happening. But for now, let's keep moving on. In the junkyard area, I find a collectible taco, which looks like a radar dish, and fight some goons. Die, fight them again, win, sign a petition I don't know anything about, and then get told I shouldn't have. Huh. After looking around enough, I finally find Frank's Flophouse. And skipping past my confusion at where the hell the quest lady is, I lockpick the door in front of everyone. Makes sense, right? Every character has a unique ability. Boots can lockpick doors and chests by playing a little guessing game. Uh, oh, uh, hey, lady, can't you open the door when no, someone knocks? Come on in. Oh, I could use the company. I guess you can't. Uh, Valesta sent me to see you about a job. Get about it. This old guy. Grumpos? He hires me to go into the tunnels, right? Bring back some mistech, easy job? Hell, I wasn't there ten minutes when something came out of nowhere and did this to me. I mean, look. Look at me. And the old bastard won't even pay me. He said, no mistech, no money. He's in the tenements next to the movie theater. If you want to punch him in the face for me. Right in the face. Damn, that was more intense than I was anticipating. I'm not complaining. Not much anyway, but that's for later. I do want to say I really like the writing in this game. Characters are brimming with personality. Even the random people on the street are more interesting in the small dialogues that they have. So we break into the old man's apartment for some reason to meet him. Think you could slink into my home that easily, you little thief? His name is Grumpos. He looks like a dwarf and a wizard had a baby. He's really crude and refuses to give the girl the money for the job she attempted. That pitiful excuse for a thief. She ain't getting a penny out of me. Not one, you hear that? I feel bad for the girl, but she wasn't hired to fail, and I ain't paying for pity. Dude, that's cold. She's literally disfigured now. Boots asks to be given the job because he's a professional, but Grumpos wants to seem prove it by getting a small Nox Guard helmet. Asking around, we learn that there's a Nox Guard with the exact helmet we're looking for. How convenient! <laughs> nice view, huh? If I was gonna kill myself, this is where I'd jump from. I managed to convince him to give it to me through some hilarious dialogue trees. And then he changes his mind and he wants it back. All right, geezer. Stop fondling the mistack and crack a gander at the goods. Am I hired or what? Data beefed up security since the Deanimo fiasco. Getting into the tunnels might be trouble. We'll deal. Here, take this and plug it in your ear. You'll understand every language from here to the Traeger anomaly. Spiffy, where'd you pull this baby from? The Nox Guard helmet. Linguinators became standard issue two months ago. Really? How'd they communicate with the aliens before that? They beat them up. Well, where the hell do we go now? Lead the way, hot pants. Now we have a new character to control. This is special, as different characters ha will have different things to say, depending on who you are. This surprised me. I still wonder how much dialogue I skipped past during my session. Anyway, Grumpos is now on the team. Yay! Yeah. 
let's take a break from the story and talk about the music. Now, I'm not a musician, so you shouldn't take what I say about music and games too seriously. I like anything with a good rhythm beat and tune. However, in this game, the music is forgettable. I mean, I went to YouTube and listened to the soundtrack, and it's fine. When I hear it, I think of the word future, so I guess it did its job somewhat. It's just that... After playing for a few hours, I thought that the music would just would have been stuck in my head. But I couldn't remember a single tune. All I could recall was droning ambiance. In a game where everything is in text and voice acting is only in the cutscenes, you'd expect the music to have left a larger impression on me. But no. Alright, that's enough about the music, because if I talk anymore I'm gonna piss someone off if I haven't already. Okay, so a while ago I was saying that I had an issue with the game, so let's get into that. I simply don't like the way it's trying to both be goofy and serious at the same time. Now I know that a, there's a lot of media productions that can be both goofy and serious. Hell, most cartoon shows are extremely goofy, but have serious lessons and concepts that they try to teach. However, in this game, the goofiness and seriousness doesn't mesh well. In this game, we have corruption, death, mutilation, space mafia deaths, and an overwhelming sense that nothing we do will matter because we're just too small in the scope of things. All of this is being shown to me, and I love it. It builds a great world and atmosphere. However, it's mixed in with all dialogue like this. Hi. <laughs> Hey, can we pull you aside for a second? Hi. Hi? Hi there. Hi! Yeah, this is gonna sound funny. Peculiar, really. But we heard... Uh, through the grapevine. ...that you had an unusual... A condition. ...accident that left you... Unusual. ...with one leg. Warning. And we were wondering if... Uh, minor uh, by any chance... ...you might give us... Loan us! Loan us, yeah. Nine. Your, uh, okay, sock. Sock! Your sock. Okay, well, we're gonna let you walk. But you watch who you're messing with next time. Oh, uh, yeah... Whatever, man. It's just weird. Like, all the bad stuff really doesn't matter. Not to the characters, anyway. Jokes are completely fine, but when a character starts talking like they are actually in a TV show, it really ruins this atmosphere. I think it would have been better if they were a little more subtle one way or the other. You know, being completely goofy with hints of seriousness, or being on, serious Pop, with him. some comedy and with. jokes sprinkled in. I know in. a two-bit thug in a fancy suit when I see one. So when you're playing this game, it's good to remember. What? It's good to remember. The game has a lot of these little moments that you only get if you remember certain things. Remember that woman that Could was dismembered because of doing the work that Grumpos gave her? Well, there's a few things you can do if you remember. First, she asks you to give Valesta the bracelet back. Now, I don't know if saying yes to that Noxgard before will make her disappear or something. I looked at a walkthrough and it says just don't tell him. So, uh... Anyway, Valesta can tell something's wrong by the color of your face and walks off to Frank's flop's house. Now, this is what blew me away. I return to the girl as Grumpos, and you know what? I got an option to pay the girl for her efforts. Enough to buy new limbs. This is not a quest, nor were there any notes or dialogue saying that I should do this. It simply comes down to memory. Hey, what would happen if you went to the girl Grumpos fucked over as Grumpos? It adds a layer of polish. They could have simply just locked the door so you couldn't get back in, but they created this simply for closure. Then again, you could have just told her to fuck off. The future is apocalypse by gold! Okay, so this review's gone on for a lot longer than I thought it would. <laughs> and it's the first game, god damn it. Look, I go through the tunnels, fight a bunch of enemies, fight a boss, 
then get told I could get unbelievable riches if I keep with Gompos. Do you have any idea how much money you're walking away from? There's energy dormant in every slag of Mystech. If we figure out a way to activate it, we'll never have to worry about money again. What do you need me for? Weren't you mad at me a second ago? Well, I don't need you in particular. But you've got a flair for fighting, and everyone else I know is dead. What you need is a change of venue. When we come back, you'll have enough money to pay off your debt and start a new life. I'm listening. And then we leave Anachronox. The planet, that is. I've intentionally made this vague because I do think this is worth playing yourself. I can tell this game is going to be long and it's going to have an engaging story and characters. But I also know it's going to be tedious and the problems I see are not going to go away. I'd like to be wrong here, but I just don't like how much patience you need for this game. So in conclusion, the design and writing of the world is good, the mechanics are cool, the music is forgettable, combat is slow but interesting. Characters are distinct and fun, but the game can't find a balance between goofiness and seriousness. But the game also rewards a good memory. What do you think? Sounds pretty good to me, and honestly, this is all my opinion. It's all subjective. What I like and what you like may be different. You may have more patience than me, who knows? I just definitely recommend this game, you should really try it for yourself, even when it's not on sale. Steam sells it for 5 quid. Have fun. This game was a genuine surprise. I didn't expect this much from the first one. Alright, let's see what the next game will be. Ah, shit. Well, next video is probably going to be shorter. 6 out of 10. Decent. Ha <laughs> ha.